Hello everyone, Vincent Thiel from HCTV Tessia. I'm a TV reviewer and professional calibrator. One question that I always get asked on this channel is why we don't review more affordable televisions instead of just focusing on high-end OLEDs that cost thousands of pounds. Well, one reason is because many manufacturers these days are not willing to send out their entry-level or mid-range televisions to us for review. Not only us, but to all publications in the UK for review for one reason or another. They prefer to focus on their high-end sets, which presumably can generate higher profit margins. But not all manufacturers are into that practice. Today, we have Hisense, a Chinese brand who have kindly sent us their N6800 model, a 50-inch 4K TV that does HDR for only £600. Let's unbox this TV and go through the user menu to see what picture settings are available. Okay, someone at Hisense has implemented a clever bit of design on this TV because there are actually two handles that you can just use to lift the TV up from the box. Okay, so I've unboxed the Hisense N6800 and hooked up SkyQ to the television. I'm going to go through the picture settings and see what's available. If I press the settings button, if I go into picture, there are several picture modes to be selected and I believe that the default is standard, which usually have a far too blue color temperature. It's probably better to switch to one of the cinema day 
or cinema night mode. So the cinema day is presumably for daytime viewing, cinema night for nighttime viewing, PC and game mode to lower input lag, or the dynamic mode for a shop environment. Because I'm filming this during daytime, I'm going to select the cinema day mode and then I'm going to go through the settings to see what's available. First thing is apply picture mode. You can either ensure that the changes you make to the picture settings are limited to this input or apply to all HDMI input if you click on all sources. I'm just going to limit it to the current source at the moment. Contrast determines the digital white level, so if you boost it up, it will actually increase the dynamic range of the image. But at the top end, if you drive it too high, then you will introduce white clipping. Let's go back to the normal value of 40. And brightness control is basically how high you want your video black level to be. I haven't actually put on any test pattern on this television, but I will do so later on when I review this television to decide what point is the correct value for the brightness control. If you drop it too low below the video black level, you'll start crushing the shadow detail. But if you drive it too high, then you'll just be washing out the blacks. The blacks will turn gray without any visible increase in shadow detail. We'll just lower it to the default value of 51. And color saturation is just a global color control that increases the saturation of all the colors globally. And the default value is 45. Backlight determines the light output that you get from the television. So on an LED LCD such as the Hisense N6800, if you drive it too high, it may get uncomfortable to watch in a night environment and you may expose the underlying backlight uniformity issues such as clouding or flash lighting. But if you set it too low for let's say a daytime environment, then the picture will look too dim and you will lose shadow detail. So I'll just leave it in the default setting of 100 for daytime viewing. Let's go into the advanced picture settings. Okay, uh, so I believe the overscan is set to off by default if you send the TV a 4K signal or a UHD signal, ultra high definition signal, which is 2160p from my SkyQ silver box. Sharpness control determines the amount of edge enhancement you apply to the picture. Adaptive contrast, I'm not entirely sure what this is, I'll need to check later, but presumably this is just dynamic contrast system that can crush shadow detail or highlight detail if used inappropriately. Color temperature warm, I believe there are, there are three values here, standard, warm and cool. Usually warm is the most accurate to the standard that is used within the film and broadcast industry, which uses a white point of D65. Ultra smooth motion is, I believe it is just basically motion compensated frame interpolation. And it's good to see that Hisense has actually introduced a separate, if you set it to, if you set it to custom, I think you can set the dejada and the blur control separately, bringing the amount of adjustment up to the level of, let's say, the Samsung TVs on their Auto Motion Plus controls, they have the separate the blur and the other function as well. LG True Motion, if you set it to user, you can actually set the blur and the other separately as well. Panasonic, on their later sets, if you set Intelligent Frame Creation to custom, you can set the blur reduction and the film smooth function separately. And it's good to see that Hisense has joined them in offering this separate adjustments. This is to make sure that you can boost motion clarity without introducing so opera effect to 24 frames per second films. Okay, and if we go down and set local dimming, right, so there's a local dimming control. I'm not even sure whether this TV is a direct lit LED or an H lit LED. I will need to check later on by reading through the specification sheets or definitively by actually scanning this TV with a thermal imager. Next is noise reduction. And for the most pristine picture, especially from a 4K signal, I would just set it to off. MPEG noise reduction is to deal with 
off-air broadcast that has impact compression artifacts such as mosquito noise. I again, usually this is a spatial filter, just turn it off for a pristine, a high quality signal such as that from SkyQ or 4K Blu-rays and Blu-rays. If we go into the expert settings, so let me just get this right. There's advanced picture settings and then you get into the really proper expert settings that is presumably reserved for professional calibrators. Like myself, Color Tuner is basically the color management system, advanced color management system that allows us to adjust the three primary colors of red, green and blue and the three secondary colors of yellow, cyan and magenta. And under each color, you can further fine-tune the three parameters of hue, saturation, and brightness. Interestingly, you can also decide whether to apply the color tuner to all the picture modes, or just in this preset, which is a Cinema Day preset. Go back one level, and we go into the white balance submenu. So there are the two-point controls here. This is very interesting. So you can actually select whether you want to actually apply the white balance controls or grayscale controls to the native color gamut. Presumably this is just the inherent color gamut of the television or the auto gamut which is likely going to be more restricted for HD standard, the Rec. 709 or tailored for the UHD standard which is Rec. 2020. So this is fairly interesting. Again, when I review it, I'll have to explore what ramifications selecting either of these settings will have on the grayscale controls. Let's leave it on the default value of auto for the moment. R offset stands for red offset, G offset, green offset, blue offset. So the offset controls affect the darker portion of the image. So when you're adjusting grayscale, you are basically adjusting mainly the 50% is still gray to black and R gain stands for red gain, G gain, green gain, and B gain, blue gain. So the gain controls affect the brighter portion of the image, around 50% density degree to peak white. Again, there's usually some sort of interaction between these two controls, so it's always good to go back and forth between these controls to check that you have not actually raised the errors elsewhere. So that was the two-point white balance controls, but the Hisense is also actually offering us a 10-point control, which is quite good, bringing it up to the level offered by most major manufacturers these days. So if I actually switch it on, you can again adjust the grayscale at each 10% interval, so 10, 20, 30. So you can adjust the grayscale at each 10% video stimulus interval. Black level auto, it's grayed out because it's detecting the signal from SkyQ. Either that or it's just detecting a UHD signal and graying it out. But usually what the black level control does is to allow you to set the video level 16 to 235 or the PC level 0 to 255. Gamma adjustment, the default value appears to be ITU1886, which is the most recent EOTF or electro-optical transfer function standard published by the ITU or International Telecommunications Union. This is an organization that sets the standards for all most of the electronic devices, including televisions. So they have come up with this BT186 standard or ITU186 standard, which basically is a modified 2.4 EOTF that compensates for the black level of the television. And then there's a pure 2.4 gamma, 2.2 gamma, probably for a brighter room, or 2.0 gamma for a really, really bright room. And then there's the RGB only mode, which allows you to set the color decoding. Basically, in the old days, in the analog days, remember if you bought a test disk such as the DVE or Digital Video Essentials test disk that is produced by Mr. Joe Kane, you will be using a filter, a color filter, to check the color decoding of your television. Now, lately, many manufacturers, I think Samsung was probably the first one to start it off on their flat panels display. Certainly in terms of flat screens, I remember seeing this first on Samsung televisions. They allow you to 
filter out the green and blue or filter out the red, whatever you want to actually filter out to, for you to check the color decoding of each individual primary colors, which is much more accurate. But these days, we seldom even use it as professional calibrators. We seldom use it because we are just basing all our calibrations and adjustments based on the meter, which can give you all the values of the hue, the saturation and luminance errors just from the meter alone, which is much more accurate than having to go through this decoding process. Okay, so that concludes our exploration of the picture settings on this TV. I'll be spending the next couple of weeks reviewing this television, so if you have any questions about this TV or anything you want us to test, feel free to leave a comment below. If you found this video useful, please click the like button, would really appreciate it. And subscribe to the HDTV Test YouTube channel if you are already not a subscriber yet for more videos like this. Thank you for watching and I'll see you the next time.